Hillary Clinton warning about fake news. This was yesterday. Roll tape. The epidemic of malicious fake news and false propaganda that flooded social media over the past year, it's now clear that so-called fake news can have real-world consequences. This isn't about politics or partisanship. Lives are at risk. Lives of ordinary people just trying to go about their days to do their jobs, contribute to their communities. It's a danger that must be addressed and addressed quickly. Well, maybe Hillary Clinton was using that, the fake news idea, as an excuse for her loss, maybe. Joining us now is Crystal Wright, author of Con Job. Crystal Wright is with us this morning. What, what, do, you, what do you think? What, was Hillary using that as an excuse, do you think? Absolutely, but I didn't see Hillary Clinton talk about the biggest fake news, which was CNN, the Clinton News Network, which predicted over a year ago that she was going to beat Donald Trump. That's the biggest fake news going, and they're fake polls, many would argue, but there was no mention of that. It's like Hillary Clinton really just needs to sit down, be quiet, and go away. She ran an awful campaign. She had no real message for the American people except me, myself, and I. You know, Crystal, I really <laughs> hope that I never cross you. Because <laughs> to be able to sit down, go away, I, you know, I, I don't really want that, but um, there you go. Well, I don't think that'll ever happen between us, Stuart. Never, never. <laughs> now, uh, the New York Times is already going after Andy Posda for those racy Carl's Jr. and Hardy's ads. I think Carl's Jr. ads in particular. And they are mm -hmm. racy. We've got some on the screen right now. Right now. Maybe you, you can't see them. But how do you feel about ads like this being run by a man who wants to be the Labor Secretary of the United States? You mean a man who actually runs successful CKE restaurants in 44 states and 39 countries? I mean, what's so racy about these ads? I don't see anybody howling. Was the New York Times howling about the Victoria's Secret fashion show to sell lingerie when you have models scantily clad in, in you know, lacy little outfits that arouse men? I mean, come on. Is this offensive? No, it makes me want to go out and buy some burgers. I'd love to be in an ad. I mean, <laughs> sign me up. Come on, guys. Have you opened up a, a women's magazine recently? Vogue magazine. You'll see racier stuff than that to get women to look sexy for their mates. I mean, this is just another attack on, I think, a labor secretary nominee who's going to be wonderful for America, who puts workers first, not union jobs, right? And, and we know what happened. Yeah. What did the unions do to the U.S. auto company, um, auto manufacturers and, and auto companies, Stuart? What happened to that? Yeah, we all know the story of that, right? Yeah, okay. You know, I, I like to ask you a question and let, then let you go because you give us <laughs> endlessly interesting and stimulating stuff as well. And I will be looking at Vogue in the future. Believe me, I'll be, I'll be tuning into Vogue for sure. Is that Anna, Anna Wintour? Is that her magazine? Yeah, that's it, her. That's I mean, her. she, trust me, the layouts that Vogue magazine has put, um, you know, these Carl's Jr.'s ads to shame. It, yeah. Trust me, it's, uh, you know. Oh, I'll, I'll check it out. Believe me, I'll I bet. check it out. I just drove up Vogue uh, magazine sales, I you think. You probably yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal, right. Oh, you can come back anytime you like. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed, Crystal. We'll see you soon.